hello, hello, and welcome to the Rag Company Podcast main show number 36. We are at 36. You foaming, bro? We're close. All We're right. close. All so. right. So, well, why don't we just you know, get right into it? We actually, yeah. we've been working on a, our setup in here. It kind of keeps it, it evolves. evolving yep. and developing. So now we've actually got, whoop, we had a preview. There it is. <laughs> it's back. All right. So we so can we're actually, actually watching ourselves see ourselves on our here. Uh, monitor here. <laughs> and we've got text. So we've got topics we can stay on track. Yeah. yeah. Stay on track. So we're, we're really high tech We're not going to fall down the rabbit hole anymore, <laughs> so to speak. Well, so, we might, but yeah. that's, that's always fun. But I we're mean. able to do more. It yeah. Looks, it, uh, let's just say it looks pretty So we'll actually be looking here. up more at the camera more often. So for those watching, it won't feel like we're <laughs> just ignoring you the whole yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, guys, why don't we start with what we did over the weekend? What's mm. going on in Levi's world? Yeah. It was a crazy weekend for me. Um, well, I bet you got How crazy was it on a scale of 1 to 10? It was... It was it was probably like a nine. Seven. Oh, wow. That's, that is. That's pretty crazy. Let's just crazy. put it this okay. way. We listed our house on Friday. Well, Thursday afternoon. Uh, and Friday, we had 11 showings okay. scheduled. And then on Saturday, we had another seven showings scheduled and an open house. And so my wife and me and the kids were out of the house from 11 until 6 o'clock at oh, night on man. Saturday. And... I don't know about you guys. Like, there's only so much for, so much stuff you can do outside the house, right? And there's only so much stuff you can do outside the house, and when you have two little kids, sometimes you just want to go home and lay on the couch and let them play with toys. Like, <laughs> sometimes like, you just want to give up <laughs> yeah, on life literally. and just let them literally. raise themselves. Yeah, but on a Saturday, like there are times where it's like I just I want to turn on the TV, and let you guys just play sure. with toys and. You know, chill yeah. out. But we couldn't. We had to like find things to do with them. Yeah. For the whole day. Yeah. So that was like that it's a was, big ass. It was. And then on Sunday we did the exact same thing. Um, and total we had a signature board for our house and people coming through. We probably had seventy people come through our house this weekend wow. just to look at it. Wow. Um, yeah. Today, right now, as we're speaking, I was joking with Tim that my phone may be going off because we put our phones in the other room, uh, oh, yeah. so we're not distracted. Um, <laughs> but we're right at the point where our uh, offers are coming in, um, and looking good. It's well, we'll see. We've got two offers in already. We're gonna look at the rest of them um, and just kind of pick our best one that we want to go with and okay. and uh, go from there. So that'll be good. Um, but yeah, needless to say, it was crazy just going like. My wife and I are looking at each other like, well, what do we do now? Where do we go? What do we do? And so we started out Saturday morning, uh, took the kids to Home Depot and Ooh. did a uh, the kids' workshop. Yeah. I actually liked doing yeah, that as those a kid. Are, I, remember, I remember that when I was a kid. Yeah, I, I never used got to, to do run that some stuff. of those when I worked at Home yeah. Depot. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Hadley, this whole last week, like I've been running to Home Depot to get stuff for the house, um, just trying to finish little projects here and there. And she saw the flyer and read it and said, kids' workshop. When is that? When can I do that? We need to sign up for it. I need to do a kids' workshop. I must. I must do kids' <laughs> workshop. Um, and I couldn't find any information from them. Um, and so it was just happenstance. We showed up Saturday morning, and it was first Saturday morning of every month they do it during the summer. Perfect. So oh, cool. um, it worked out. She was like, oh, my gosh, what's happening? All these little kids in orange <laughs> orange aprons. She was Me, there, now. Yeah, she was <laughs> yeah. like, I got to get over there. And so she built her birdhouse. They were nice. doing birdhouses. And she got her little pin and she put it on her apron and nice. like she was stoked. She was oh, yeah. she cool. kept while she was working. She's like, I can't believe I'm working at Home Depot. I can't believe I'm working <laughs> here right now. Like she thought it was. So... I would just imagine somebody mispronouncing it as Home Bidepo. <laughs> Home Bidepo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But she was so excited. Augie was doing it, but he kind of he not was, not quite as he's more he's, he's more of a Lowe's guy, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In case you didn't know, there's this this ongoing battle. He was Lowe's. I was Home Depot. Yeah. 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 Levi doesn't care. I so. don't care. There's a Home Depot next to my house. I, mean, so. I, I secretly like Home Depot more we, than we Lowe's. We have our and, past. Oh. Yeah. I do. I, I do. I, Home Depot has good vibes. Lowe's is Lowe's is actually targeted more towards um, uh, females. I don't know if you guys know oh. that, but all of the marketing, all of the decorating, and the colors they choose for that whole store and that layout yeah. is geared that towards well, females. Well, I remember about the marketing because I remember they would say the Home Depot setup is kind of like oppressive because it's so construction zony and yeah. Yeah, looking more, that way yeah. and to more like a, yeah to the suburban audiences it doesn't necessarily translate yeah. as well so yeah. that's why Lowe's is able to take up a lot of market share in that that makes sense, sense. Yeah. so that makes sense um, but yes yeah, so we, we went way the, off topic that's <laughs> all right we went we took the kids there did that 
Uh, they had fun. We looked at some flooring for the new house um, and then uh, took them to go to Big Judd's for Ooh, lunch. Wow, nice. you treated them. Yeah. Wow. So, that, that was uh, a good day. Those of you that don't know <laughs> what Big Judd's is, if you ever watched Man vs. Food <laughs> yeah. or um, even, I don't know if they were on Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives or not. I'm not but sure. I'm sure. Uh, but they were they, they were on Man vs. Food. They are, uh, they're, a, they're a challenge place. So you, they have yeah, the burger, have burger challenge. challenge and, and they make phenomenal <laughs> burgers. Yep. Um, theirs is the Big Judd. It's a one pound burger um, yep. and then a pound of fries. I and did the challenge. Did you guys know <laughs> that? I haven't done it I in house, it. Yeah. but I did complete it once How'd with my you brother. Feel after what we did though is yeah. we would just go buy it just the, yeah, the buy, challenge buy the on challenge their own. Eat mm-hmm. Split it up between like four people. Yeah, basically. But, but my brother and I would just buy the challenge each. We mm-hmm. each yeah. get one. So it was a burger and the fries and a milkshake, or whatever. Yeah. And then we just take it back to our house and we just eat it and mm-hmm. watch oh, a movie. Okay. Yeah. And we try and time ourselves. Yeah. Um, and I, when I was a younger man, I could do it quite easily. <laughs> yeah. After that, though, my wife and I would usually order it and then have friends over and we'd just, you know, cut the burger in fourths. Yeah. And it's $13 for the challenge burger. Yeah. So it's, it's not, it's not it's bad. It's burger and fries for thirteen ninety five. Like, that's a yeah. killer deal. Well, then you it, split it, it up amongst four people. And if you do, and, well, and if you do the challenge, if you succeed with the challenge, you get it for free yeah. or, or something you like get it for it's free and it goes on the you get a picture and a T-shirt. I have a I have a picture on the wall. My I brother-in-law did it. He I did a two pounder. I didn't get Here's a, a picture T-shirt. Of someone who I was ate kind of much. bummed about that. Yeah, <laughs> but that was probably actually that was an extremely hard challenge. That was it pretty, is it's it's dense. The the bun is dense. dense. And, the, and well, the I chose fries are thick, huge cut. I went with the tater tots because you had the yeah. choice, and the tater tots no, were just as are. bad. <sighs> yeah. yeah, it's still it's it's all potatoes, man. Yeah, yeah. one way or another. Yeah. But uh, but we took the kids there, did nice. that. Then we took them to Bodies in Motion, which is that indoor gymnasium. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Right. So it's got the jungle gym and the nice. slides, and you pay a fee, and then the parents can go just chill out on couches. And can, can the parents an get in on that? Or yeah, no? the parents can get in and climb around, and then there's like a Ninja Warrior. Uh, set up so you can run and climb and do stuff and so fall into um, horrible traps yeah you can <laughs> and so uh but it was great because we met some friends at home depot huh. with their daughters that are the same age as our kids and so the, they got to do that and then we said hey we're gonna go to lunch and then go do uh, bodies of motion they're like call us so at least impromptu we had to play date impromptu play date it worked mm-hmm. out perfect so uh got the kids worn out then went to the pound Mm. After that, to the Humane Society yeah. to look at dogs and cats, because <laughs> um, that's apparently something that my wife takes the kids to go do randomly on the weekends and just oh, for good. fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Build, builds them up to take you. Like, Check out this cat. This is the one I like. This is the, you know, like they already knew they knew their way around. I was like, I didn't even know you guys have been here before. <laughs> How do um, you know where that is? But we did find a dog that we really liked. But I, I put my foot down and said we can't get him yet yeah. because. And he'll be gone because we have a really great shelter here that uh, they get rid of dogs quick. They're no yeah. kill shelter. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, we're freezing. No, that. yeah, no, they get rid of them. no yeah. kill. I literally, I texted them and said, I'm at the pound, killing time. <laughs> yeah, kill and, and when you said killing yeah. time, I thought, oh, no, I yeah. thought you meant like killing time. Yeah, killing time. Killing <laughs> time. Yeah, we were literally just trying to kill an hour. Yeah. Because um, I know how you feel about but, that. But yeah. yeah, no, but the dogs uh, were great. Uh, they just got a whole new shipment in from California. So because our, our Humane Society is a no kill shelter. Right. Um, they they literally get all these dogs adopted quick. And so yeah. my wife was telling me she was there two weeks ago. They only had six dogs total. Wow, in the um, whole place. And so they had just gotten another. It's uh, a big place. Yeah, and they had just yeah. gotten another 38 dogs last week hmm. um, from California. And they've got another order coming from, like, Washington. That they're, so they've got a big group of dogs that are coming through. Yeah. Um, so it was really great. And when I was texting, your mom said she had just donated 500 towels to the Humane Society. Yeah, we do that, by the way, in uh, case anybody was wondering where some of the yeah. leftover towels go and stuff. It's a great place yeah, to Yeah, we donate towels to them because them they need them for cleanups and all that them, yeah. kind of stuff. So uh, we did that and then just went home finally and uh, went over to my mother-in-law's and my wife and I literally crashed on her bed because yep. uh, it was just an exhausting day of nothing. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah. It was weird. Yeah. It was weird. Um, but, yeah, and then Sunday, same thing out the door again and this time i took my kids to my dad's and then we went to target and like wandered around ran into our friends again yep. that we had mm. spent saturday with and they we're like be what stalking the heck? yeah <laughs> they were like what the heck you guys just came <laughs> to our hangout places we're like i guess so we, we need to be out of the house so <laughs> yeah um, but that was my weekend so it was it was just a long very long weekend for hmm. us uh 
So hopefully good news today. We'll see. Yeah, well, and, good uh, luck. We'll yeah, go no, there. That's, that's one What'd of you guys things. do? Honestly, I didn't do a whole lot. I was just kind of prepping around the house, you know, a little spring cleaning. You it's helped starting your to dad look a little set up downstairs? Out. Yeah, I, I helped set up the office downstairs. What was once Anthony and I's office is now an extra kind of like kind of secure packing area where you can close the door and actually talk to customers on the phone. So you can mm-hmm. help them out there as yeah. opposed to having the phone and everything at the front desk, which it gets a little noisier. There's a lot of, you know, yeah. hustle around there. So just being able to go into an office for, for our packers and stuff, they, they can have an easier time, you know, answering the phone where it's not quite as uh, chaotic. Yeah. Well, we have uh, customer service. So yeah. um, you've probably talked to some of the folks on the phone. If you called in and you haven't talked to us, you've talked to them. Um, they're the other employees. Everybody answers the phone here. Yep. Um, and so, uh, sometimes people want to put in an order. And yep. like you said, it's very hard to hear downstairs when you've got 12 people walking around, yeah. 10 people talking and chatting and telling stories and stuff. And well, so especially when someone's trying to like walk you through an order yeah. and stuff, you yep. got to be able to focus. Yeah. So. so we, so they, they built a room downstairs, one of the, their old office and we've turned it into another pack room as well as, a uh, we built a cus- customer service desk. Yeah, um, so they can work now. on that. Yeah. There's a computer. They can place orders, all that stuff. So just part of us growing. Yep. Uh, yep. Jeff even painted your office. Yeah, he so did. We're You're welcome. The, I know. So, we're, <laughs> so Anthony was going to move into a new office. Yeah. And Dane was going <laughs> to move into his new office. Well, it just kind of worked out that uh, that wasn't going to work. We found yep. out we couldn't fit the two desks in. It was a little tight so, there with Tim and I. It just I, I think for both our sake, it's better just to have separate offices. Yeah, so, so we basically, Tim, uh, by luck and happenstance, was able to receive his own office. Yeah. Although uh, now it's covered in foam. So <laughs> he get, it's cool, though. I love the foam. Yeah. I'm jealous. Uh, that's, that's nice. But so... If so facto, Dane, you get Anthony's office. The office he had for about yeah, a week. A week, and <laughs> Anthony gets a new office. Yep. So, yeah. Uh, Which so was we once moved. the Island of Misfit Towels. Yeah, it was our <laughs> museum. Yeah. Right, company Towels. What'd you yeah. do? Um, so I'm trying to think, uh, Saturday, uh, Saturday, it was pretty busy you all day you long. A busy day. Yeah, we went, so you were posting stuff up. I saw you doing stuff. Yeah, basically. So Saturday during like the first, like, I guess three quarters of the day, um, we went and checked uh, out venues, wedding venues for uh, me and my fiance. I went to go looked at stuff uh-huh. like that. Uh, apparently you have to book that stuff. ASAP because oh, yeah. a, a lot of people <laughs> were asking me, you know, why am I doing that so soon? And as of right now, I'd probably say nine out of the 10 venues we've called and, and, and contacted, they're already booked for 2018. They don't have one weekend open. Yeah. So th- this year is off the table. So um, and now they're booking into uh, next year. And it just it's not ideal because a lot of people are wanting to book around the same time we are because we kind of want a September wedding and they're already booking up for s- September of 2019, if you can imagine that. Oh, yeah. So no, I um, remember that from when I got there. Yeah. So it's getting crazy. So we're having to check it. I mean, and that's something I, I mean, I'm I'm the guy that kind of procrastinates and, you know, and my uh, my fiance, she is so on top of everything. She's like the best when it comes to scheduling things. She has like her calendar year booked out for like the next like five years. And so she's good with that stuff. I'm the complete opposite. So it's kind of nice that she gives me some structure in life. So um, but well, that's good. So she's doing all this stuff and uh, it's, which is awesome. She's getting it done. But I'm just kind of showing up smiling and nodding but uh we went and checked out a couple different venues on saturday and kind of what i'm finding is i don't know i mean everywhere else in the country is obviously different but in idaho a lot of these venues are basically diamonds in the rough so you'll have this gorgeous oasis venue right the most beautiful place but this place is now surrounded by a trailer park somehow. And I'm not trying to give people a bad visual of what Idaho is like because it's no. not like that. But there's well, like just – You took a picture of that. You showed me that picture of that barn you guys went to look at. Yeah. That is oh, yeah. phenomenally oh, – They took yeah. this old barn and then redid the interior and built a second upper hayloft. But they put in the most gorgeous wood floors. It's, they cleaned yeah. up the beams. It's just it is beautiful. It's an event center. It's, yeah. And then downstairs yeah. you can set it up with dance floors and tables. and ch- I mean it's it, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful it, place. It's insane. Like you, like it looks like something out of like a movie or something out of, like yeah. a fairy tale. Literally, it is right next to a two-story high school, and um, yeah, it's, and it's like the parking lot of the high school. It, it's right it, next it, to you. It's exactly what it looks like. <laughs> and I mean, I could throw a rock and hit this high school, and and it's not ideal because on the other side of the small fence, there's the track field, the football field, and all of this, and so. In any picture, you're going to see this high school in the background, which is just yeah. 
It's looks, not like looks, this, you stand out of this. Gonna Photoshop they have this gorgeous out. picture window, yeah. and you go get your pictures in front of it, and you see like the, 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 the track high, field, you know, yeah. the track field, and kids running around. But there's like the dump in the distance. Would be, yeah, so, yeah, it would be great if it was like a beautiful backdrop of mountains or yeah. something. Yeah, like, and so unless which we're, to be fair, a lot of the views around here are of mountains. Yeah, yeah, we and we and and there are some, and that's kind of the the thing is there are nicer venues here, and the other thing we're finding out is, you know, you're paying. I mean, I'm not trying to sound cheap here, but you're paying thirty five hundred to five thousand bucks for twelve hours of a space. Of a space, you're and basically yeah. sometimes that doesn't include tables and chairs. It does no. not. That doesn't no. include doesn't, you know no food. Electricity. No, yeah, no electricity. <laughs> no nothing. And so I, I can hear the comments coming in. The wedding industry is a racket. Oh, like yeah. all that no, stuff is. is coming it in is. now, and it is. And you're, frankly, <laughs> I mean, right? You're paying roughly you know four thousand bucks to rent out a random dude's backyard yeah. um, for. 12 hours, right? And you, and you have to, you know, bring everything in at a time frame and you have to pack everything out and literally has to be spotless by the time you and leave. How many people do you want you to go have? over? Because that's a that fee. also figures and out yeah, how and, many people you got to do. Yeah. And if there's, there's fees, there's, you know, an extra hourly charges. If you do want to come pre check the venue or set up something, do a test run, that's an extra fee. Yep. There's all these things that we're finding out. And I mean, the more I see that, I mean, I'm just like, gosh, this is a lot for such a short period of time. And so now, I'm almost leaning towards the whole idea of a of a closer destination wedding. You know, yeah. something an hour to two hours away, maybe up in the mountains, because there's a lot of these places you can Airbnb a cabin. You know, in yeah. McCall, which is two hours away, which is absolutely gorgeous, and they allow they allow weddings for an extra fee. And um, I remember I went to a wedding that was great up at uh, Warm Lake, where they had the little cabin, they got that little bar, and they've got all the little oh, stuff yeah. and the pier and stuff. I'm sure it's booked out now, but that is a nice kind of secluded place. It's not too far away. It's like yeah. two hours, but yeah. that's that's like just far enough away if people are in the wedding party want to like camp for a couple of days. Well, yeah. and that's you what I was, that. and I told him about my brother did a place called the No Business Lodge in McCall, mm. and they rented out the whole lodge. Okay, and it had part of it was like a f- four thousand square foot house that like the basement was set up. One room had like fifteen bunk beds in it. Yeah, and then it had like two or three master suites. That's true, like Idaho in cabin it. style, just yeah. like a bunch of beds in a room. Yeah, and that's your and then TV quarters. rooms and all kinds of yeah. stuff. And uh, but it also had a bar. Like they built the yeah. front of the building was set up to look like a bar, had pool tables and that's and fun. beer taps and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and then they had the barn converted to where they could put tables and chairs and decorated that all the up. Event part. So well, they did it. That was where they ate. So oh, okay. The way he did it was they, um, my brother and his wife, they set it up where they rented the house, they rented the lodge, and then they brought, they had their wedding party, so their bridesmaids and their groomsmen stay in the Mm -hmm. lodge with them. Hmm. And then all their guests could come up that day. It was only two hours away, so it wasn't hard for local people to come up. Sure. And come up for the day. It was on a Saturday in the afternoon at like three o'clock, so you could leave Boise at one o'clock and get there. Yeah. Um, just in time. Um, and then and people could drive home that night if they wanted to. Or if they had family coming in from out of town, they rented out blocks of rooms at the hotels in town in McCall. There's actually quite a few. So, so people could, they were like, hey, stay at this place or this place. And so they got a deal and they did yeah. that and said, just rent your room there if you want. And people could go. And then it made it easier for family to come up if they wanted to. They set it on a weekend. So if yeah. you wanted to come up Friday night, you could. If you wanted to come up, you know, and spend Sunday in town, you could do whatever. And then the the party was Saturday afternoon from like four o'clock till eleven o'clock. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So now you got some ideas. I mean, well, <laughs> but that I, that, that's that's, that's kind of all... what I'm leaning towards. More of just, I mean, if I'm paying that much, I'd rather get away for like a weekend. Yeah. And then yeah. if I'm probably not going to get as many people come out to the wedding, and that's and that's all right. I'll still invite them, and if they want to come and they want to make the trip, that's cool. But I'm just, you know, like I said, you're paying this pretty, you know, large amount of money, and I'm looking at my uh, uh, my fiance. I'm like, hey, so we can get this, or we can get two more Honda Groms. Yeah. And <laughs> seriously, and take one hell of a road trip if you <laughs> want you know we're gonna yeah we're gonna hit total uh you know 50 miles an hour tops and we're gonna ride up in the mountains go to canada or something so um <laughs> yeah it is it's just they, and some people will take that and go mm-hmm. we're gonna use that as down payment on another house yeah, or property yeah. or, or whatever you think about how you know that like when my wife and i got married we had to try and do it on the cheap and that was 13 years ago 
But yeah. we rented a place called the Bishop's House, which was an old Victorian mansion across from the old Idaho State Penitentiary. Oh, yeah. okay. Now, some people may go like, whoa, wait, you did it across from a prison? <laughs> yeah, like, it's a little different. It's a little that. different. Our prison that we have it, is That from... prison burned down. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, <that laughs> wait, the burn prison down. burned down? Yeah. <laughs> so there's no. ghosts yeah. and <laughs> souls in that? Well, yeah. Yeah, kind I mean, of. No, it was a territorial prison, and it was built out of sandstone, and it looks like a medieval castle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we so have cool. this castle there, and then they've, they stopped using it in the 70s. And they've repurposed the grounds. And so the botanical gardens are on the outside of the, the, the Idaho botanical gardens are there. Um, they're, they've uh, moved some old uh, Victorian mansions that have been throughout the city, have moved and relocated there mm-hmm. uh, to that area. So, and then there's tons of old mature landscaping and trees. And it's a beautiful area. And it's yeah. right at the base of the foothills. So you literally Can hike step up and out and right up is table rock which is a very prominent uh landmark here in boise yeah. and so for us we were like well it's it was a block away from our house yeah i mean we could literally ride our bikes which we did we rode our bikes away <laughs> from our wedding we had our cruiser bikes you know my uncles and dad and, and siblings had tied cans with string and stuff to the back of our bicycles <laughs> and i rode my tux my wife had her dress on and after the wedding we rode our bikes to our house Boom. and then parked them and then hopped in the car and then went to a hotel. Like it was, it, it was a uh, close. What, what did you do for that? <laughs> we went to Jack in the Box. I was going to say, you're giving us a very uh, yeah. visual. We went to Jack thing. in the Box because we were really oh. hungry because we didn't eat. Nice. That's yeah. pretty high for And then wedding, we watched I mean. some SVU. <laughs> nice. Some Law and Order SVU. Darn crazy. Yeah. Anyways, okay, we're not going to bore you. Well, we're okay, okay, we're not going to bore you. Right yeah. now. But this is getting pretty boring. So <laughs> now, um, moving on. So something more exciting is that um, our friend uh, Brian from Gearhead Detailing is doing a really cool detail this weekend, uh, or was doing a cool detail this weekend, and he wanted me to come out and do some filming for him. So um, I went out by myself and did that. He is doing a 1993 MK4 Supra, and it's, pretty Supra. it's a very nice Supra and you'll see nice it I posted red. a picture up on our Instagram if you want to check that out um, and he has pictures on his Instagram as well uh, under gearhead detailing but went out there it's my friend Chris Pugh's red Supra uh, this thing is it's it's gorgeous it's got all sorts of cool little mods on it and stuff I think it's pushing you know I, I, I don't know 700 wheel horsepower probably or around sort of around there <laughs> um it's got these really gorgeous ccw wheels and i love that wing on um it. and it's got a really cool a wing. Nice wing so brian uh, did a full two-step on it he did a coating on it he used optimum um uh, opticoat uh, opticoat pro and he did that and it was a really fun time we got to do some filming just i'm it was just kind of cool being around a yeah. supra like you know where i'm not at a car show or i'm not where somewhere where the, where the owner's yeah. breathing down my neck yeah. because you know even going to my friend chris's house and and looking at his cars i always feel kind of like well i don't want to fanboy too much and you know drool over his car but it was kind of cool being somewhere where i could you know open the door look inside it sit inside it and say this is what uh you know a supra feels like all the cool little intricacies of it and um just to think that it's yeah. a car that's how many 19 it's almost so 20 years Old. No, it's older than that. So it's 2008. 2018. It's in its so mid to late 20s now. So, so it's 27 yeah. years old. What is it? A 94? 93. 93. Yeah. So was that bad? Years 25 old. years old. Okay. Yeah. That's one of the and, early Mark IVs. Yeah. And it looks so good still. It, it, it was awesome. But that video turned out really great. So I got to do that this weekend. Just kind of got to hang out with Brian too, which is really cool because I, I mean, it's nice to kind of be around a detail shop, you know, yeah. and, and you know, talk shop and talk about tools and talk about uh, products because. Um, we test out a, a ton of stuff here at the Rag Company, but it's always cool to get Brian's perspective because Brian um, is pretty close to our company and he's mm-hmm. worked with us for. Brian's a, also very opinionated. A about lot of different things. things. <laughs> he's opinionated, and I, and I and I always you know I always I always listen to his opinion because you know he knows a lot of his stuff, and so um, he was showing me some new products that he picked up from different product lines, and he said that he liked this more than others, and um, I got to get hands on with him and try him as well, and. Uh, it's just kind of cool. It's just nice, kind of having like a refresh, being around a shop setting. Yeah, it's to... a different. It's a different feeling. Mm-hmm. It's a different feeling. Yeah, and so, um, yeah, no, you know, no cameras, no filming, any of that stuff. It was just kind of all raw, just being right then and there, and, and testing stuff out, and and yeah. kind of learning from him on what his side of the detailing world is, and what uh, things that he's battling as a detailer, and and you know, certain things that he's seeing from marketing right. and media and. Um, it was just kind of cool to talk to him, have a refresh so we can help obviously give you guys better information, yeah. but, um, no, yeah. so that's what I did this weekend. 
All right. Well, you didn't do anything all but us. help your dad work down Pretty here. much helped my dad down here and uh, I went and saw Ready Player One yesterday, nice. so that was fun. You did see it. Yeah. Did yeah, you I like it? it? I enjoyed it, but at the same time, oh, I'm watching Dane's it. Dane's a hater, man. <laughs> Dane's a hater. <laughs> like, what did you not like about it? Fan service, the movie. I mean, it, basically, I, I could go into a whole diatribe, but basically, I enjoyed it. Nostalgia factor, very high. Enjoyed mm-hmm. all those things about yeah. it. A lot of times I got the um, Transformers effect, though, where it was just a bunch of stuff blowing up on screen for the sake of having a bunch of things right. going on. Yeah. Like, we're not going to, you know, do the effects of this too high quality. We'll just make a bunch of stuff explode and make it look like a lot's going on in a few places. Like, this is my level of uh, yeah. movies. But, like, from a storytelling perspective, it was a fun. It's like, uh, they had, like, moments where I was like, oh, this is kind of cool story-wise. But for the most part, I mean, I, I, yeah, I'm not a hater. I'm just very critical. Dane, Dane's, a, Dane's a hater. I just... <laughs> enjoyed it because you know you my favorite see... movie the last year was Blade Runner 2049 so yeah. I still have not seen and that Baby yet. Driver I need to right see that I like Baby it. Driver Baby Driver yeah. a great movie but no it I liked it just to see the Easter egg characters that was like my favorite oh, part yeah. of no, it that's it's what just... I'm saying fan service movie if you yeah. like that stuff it's like well here's your opportunity I never thought I'd get the chance to see on the big screen a Gundam fighting Mecha Godzilla. So that was rad. It's amazing. <laughs> the end Sorry. battle was actually cooler than I thought it would be. Coolest like, part, I yeah. I give credit, credit to it because I thought, here comes the big effects special at the end where yeah. they're doing all this. Actually, they did a better job with it than I expected. So yeah. kudos to that. And the ending actually wasn't half bad. So yeah. I'll, cool. I'll give them that. Nice. Normally, it's you have a rough ending on a movie mm-hmm. that's otherwise good, but in this case, it actually ended strong. So, well, I've yeah. played a lot of um, uh, MMORPGs, you know, <laughs> uh, mass RPGs where you're playing with a ton of people so i can nerd out and appreciate things like that and say hey you know i totally get where they're coming from and uh, your girlfriend plays a lot of mmos as oh well. yeah well and that was that was partially like why i might be a little sour on it is she's she's so close to that stuff already that when she saw it she was like oh cringing at some of the stuff she's like that's not how that works like but at the yeah, same time i know i told her i was like but the movie up for you <laughs> I told her, I was like, well, I get it. You're already so close to it that any, like, slight thing deviation, being off, yeah. any deviation is going to throw you. She's like, that's she not how in-game purchases work. That's so unrealistic. <laughs> but, oh, my gosh. But I will say, if you're more of a, a filthy casual, it's totally going to be awesome for you. Yeah. And there's that. See, I like all that stuff, but I'm not a gamer. Yeah. And so, that's yeah. the thing. Is, like, I used I to look be, at that but and I go, for years yeah, now. and I go, oh, like, I can watch the preview and go, that looks like a lot of fun. But I also have very few reference points. But to, to be that I can fair, draw the from. thing that's fun about this movie is if, I mean, at your age, it's perfect. At my age, at I'm my pretty age? much right. Because what are you saying, Dane? it's a ton of mid 80s nostalgia. Old, no, I'm saying there's stuff like Joust and Back to the Future. All He's like, these things. Atari. The that's, that's, that's all you yeah. see. Yeah. Oh. You look at me and you see Atari. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas if you're my age, yeah, yeah, you got to enjoy that. But it was already kind of old school at that point right. to like yeah. play an Atari 2600. I never played Atari 2600 until I was 27. I mean, yeah, I was. Joke's on you. You. Yeah, <laughs> well, I mean, but at the same time, like all yeah. that stuff, like no, this is. No, for me, it was an NES. I, yeah. I bought, I remember I bought my Nintendo. I mowed a bunch of lawns for it. Yeah. I went to Costco and bought it, and it was 1989. Mm hmm. And I was nine years old, and my dad was like, I can't believe I'm buying a gaming system yeah. with you. But I was like, I got $100. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're going to buy it. I'm going to play Duck Hunt, and I'm going to play the crap That was out always of my it. favorite. That and, and the Top Gun game. That oh, was I only fun. had Super Mario Brothers, oh. Duck Hunt. And and uh, I think it was Contra, and mm-hmm. that was Contra. Those were the yeah. only three games I had. It's all you yeah. needed, though. That's I mean, all like, I played. That's all you yep. needed. That's all my sister and I played, and that was <laughs> it. We never like we try and rent a couple games, but like they never always worked. No. Yeah. We go to Blockbuster and get the, <laughs> blowing yeah. on the cartridges. Yeah. Uh-huh. Try playing some Mega Man, yeah. and it's not going so yeah. Uh, yeah. So I was like, yeah, I just play the ones I like. Yeah. So yeah. we did uh, that. So cool. so yeah, but anyway, but it's the only right. time you'll see all those IPs in one place. Yeah. So that's, no, that's, that's I'm excited what it's about really that. for. I so, think that'll be fun. Yeah. If so, that's what you want, you'll get it. <laughs> going on to topics, we've got a ton. Like yeah, we are getting lot. into spring. We are getting into trips. We're getting into travel. I'm trying to buy a house, and all of this stuff is going on. Now we're going to talk about detailing. So, <laughs> first things first, we're trying to get this place ship shape because we've got guests. We've got guests coming. We've got uh, one of the owners of IK Sprayers. Yeah, is coming from all Goitzburg. the way from Spain, from Goitzber, to uh, check out, check us out, check out our operation, see, see what's see, going on, see what and we they do. want to see all the Basque stuff. That and has to offer, yeah, they're so. a Basque company. And so, those of you that don't know, there's the Basque people is a region in Spain part of uh, Spain, France, um, Germany, and it's a section, um, and it's the Basque country, mm-hmm. and it takes up all these other countries, and the Basque people have a unique language, um, have a unique 
culture, unique style, uh, unique food, all that stuff. And when they, uh, a lot of them emigrated. And when yep. they emigrated, they all made it to Boise, Idaho and the surrounding Treasure Valley uh, and Canyon County, Malheur County yeah. area. Um, I have Basques in my family. Mm hmm. Well, you guys may, but you've got some Portuguese, but you're from California. Yeah, but it's part of that. There's the Basque culture. There's a lot of uh, Portuguese people that are also have some Basque heritage. Mm -hmm. um, they go back a very, very, very long time in European history. Yeah. Um, but needless to say, we have a very large Basque population here in Boise, including our mayor, a bunch of the city council, a bunch of people are Basque and can, yeah. can pull their Basque descendancy. Um, so... We're, when we heard, when Iban heard that he'd be coming to Boise to check out the place, he was very excited uh, because of the Basque roots. They, Boise is where it's at. based in the Basque country. Yep. So, uh, so we're going to say we're going to have some fun with him when he's yeah. here. Um, then in the week after that, we got Jason Kilmer, the Sandman from KXK oh, Dynamics. Man. That's uh, going to be an exciting one. He's coming one. here to Boise. So for those of you that are listening that are in Utah, April 21st, we are having a wet sanding clinic. Uh, we'll put it on the Facebooks and Instagrams and all that kind of stuff so you guys can see. Uh, April 21st, 9 a.m., you guys should come up. If you're in the surrounding areas, come hang out with Jason. We're going to be doing a, Washington, a wet sanding clinic on that yeah. Saturday here in store. Um, so we're really excited about that. We're going to have some fun with him. Pull some junkyard hoods, make it we happen. we got to go do that next week. Yeah, yeah. we're going to go grab some. we go pick up some. Get some hoods. We're going to get some, like four or yeah. five of them. We're going to grab that uh, that Rally Ready Geo Metro. Oh, that, uh, <laughs> yeah. The drag rail. Yeah. Well, there's one that had Hoosiers on the front. I was yeah. like, oh, okay. We'll that go grab an assortment of different of different hoods and yeah. things like that to uh, just have fun so on. So that'll be fun. And then at the, then the end of that week, then the next week, uh, me and Jeff are headed to the car wash show in Las Vegas. Back to the um, Vegas Convention Center. Back to again. the Vegas Convention Center. I was looking for Airbnbs this morning. <laughs> a little Jeff late, I don't you think? <laughs> well, yeah, I realized I, was, I called him and was like, Where are we staying? And he was like, uh, A house that we haven't gotten yet. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I will spend my time. Because yeah. I was thinking about it last night for going to bed. My wife was asking me, like, So what's the trip? What's this? And I was like, I need to get us a place. I realize I don't think we have we a place. So nail that down. Yeah. So <laughs> we're, uh, but we'll be there at the car wash show. So uh, I know there are a number of detailers that, that do attend uh, the car wash show um, just because it's cool to see some of the gear, uh, you know, know your enemy, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, <laughs> They're you know. good people too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but we're going to be there. So if you, if you're going to be there, come say hi to us. Um, that'll be really fun to do. Um, and then uh, I don't know if you guys, if you're fans or you're on Obsessed Garage, you probably noticed uh, we are going to be at the OG training event yeah. at Rupes uh, in August. Yeah. Yep. So there's still some spots available. Yeah. You can hit that up. Only a few, though. Like, only a few. It's selling out quick. Yeah. But uh, basically, it's a weekend at the Rupes facility, um, an OG event. Yeah. Come hang out, and you'll get to hang out with us, too, because we're going to be there. Yep. If you um, know OG, you like OG. That's the yeah. place to be. Yeah, that, that's yeah, that's the I guess the w w kind of detailing you follow and that kind of lifestyle and 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 that come out. It's really cool. I mean, everybody there has a similar mindset uh, we do, and we can come out and, and we're going to be bring towels. To, yep. uh, we're going to hang out, talk to you guys, offer a little bit more. Uh, I don't know information on microfiber for people that want to learn. Well, um, a chance to hang and, out with us too, and 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 for us yeah. to hang out with you guys. You know, <laughs> humble much? No, yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> like, uh, you know, we're all. So my whole big thing is. Yes, this the way it works now is we're accessible. You can see us on YouTube. You can see us on you know on our Facebook, on our Instagram, um, and all of us in the detailing industry have seemed to send out friend requests to other detailers, yeah. and then we all meet on these groups and we all get a chance to you know talk and vice versa. But rarely do we ever get a chance to shake hands. Yeah. yeah, and actually meet each other face to face. And, spend and it's time different with talking each other. to somebody in person. It's very different, and it's and you can build that bond and get a little closer. Yeah. And when I went down to the OG event in July, uh, I built a very strong bond with a lot of guys down there and it was really fun. And I'm old school that way. I, I can have friendships online. You can have your girlfriend online where you communicate to her <laughs> via Facebook, you know, via Facebook <laughs> messenger. She just um, got an iPhone. So we're talking but there's, to yourself. But there's, now, welcome but there's to 2018. Something, there's something about shaking hands, you know, maybe giving a hug. Yeah, you know, that really bonds you. I'm sorry to, <laughs> to bring that in, but it yeah, was just, watch out for Levi. It's He's funny a if you didn't watch last week. It was really hilarious. It was yeah. a funny story. <laughs> but um, but it, no, it it 
I think there's more to that actual friendship on Facebook if you have yeah. that face-to-face connection, just like we get when we see other people or meet other people or they come visit us here at the store. Um, it, there's something that cements that friendship, that working yeah. friendship. So uh, if you're there, come see us. Also, uh, in June, so that's August 4th, um, in June, June 2nd, we've got mm-hmm. Dylan Von Kleist is coming to Boise yep. to hang out. We're going to be doing a Rupes open house here at the Rag Company. Yep. Um, we're going to have all the new pneumatics. We're yeah. going to have all Those the new machines. Fun. Guys can come and play and uh, try them all out if you haven't tried them. So, again, if you're in the surrounding states and you want to come to Boise, yeah. June 2nd, you can start planning that. Uh, we're going to have an open house. Uh, Rupa's kind of deal with Dylan here. Yeah. Um, so that'll be fun. Then uh, Matt will be coming two weeks after that. Mr. Matt Mormon. Matt Mormon yes. will be here for uh, Obsessed Garage himself. Yep, from Obsessed Garage. He's going to be here for a day. So mm-hmm. we'll have him in the studio to do some podcasts and maybe shoot some videos just yeah. for fun, hang out with him. Um, so we're really excited about that. Also, we're going to be headed to that in between Dylan's visit and Matt's visit. Right. Yeah. We are headed to New Jersey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To yeah. the Detailers Domain uh, kind of open house deal that they're going to be doing with Rupes and MONYC and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So yeah. that'll be cool. We're really excited to be a part of it. So it's going to be getting crazy these next two months. Yeah. I mean, it's literally we have events almost every other week. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. Um, it's, and I'm going to try and buy a house through all of this. And yeah. move Good a house. luck, man. So Good luck. I maybe it's need nuts. your guys' help. Yeah. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> Oh, so, but, um, yeah, lots of cool things. So if you guys, again, like Levi said, are in the surrounding states, whether you're coming out for Jason's clinic or whether you're coming out for uh, Dylan's clinic, um, I think Jason's clinic is going to be shorter. I think it's only going to be like a, a more half day, like a, kind a of event. Half day 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, and then we're going to be doing a lot of filming with him uh, throughout the rest of the day. But to have like the full like a full day event, a full experience event. Um, and if you are in the surrounding states coming down for the Rupes event yeah. uh, is going to be pretty uh, beneficial. Well, we had a you. lot of great guys came from Portland and utah and stuff uh for uh, our optico clinic yep. that we right. had in january mm-hmm. um that that was really great when dan was here so um we had a good turnout so we're hoping for you know if you guys are nearby come come hang out yeah. man don't yeah. be a stranger yeah it's a quick trip especially if you're in, if you're in utah or uh, you washington, know, like said, Oregon, montana, washington Wyoming, montana Wyoming, any, of, any of them uh, really not yep. too bad so yep. cool so you have a couple upcoming videos and vi- yeah. a video series that we're going to kind of explain. Um, so we've talked about what we're doing with Dane's Volvo. We're going to be doing the uh, super super thorough used car detail series. It's going to um, be like a five or a six parter. So it's going to be yeah, take, one of the more ambitious ones. We've, we've been done. waiting, though. We've yeah. been waiting yeah. to finish the rest of them because of what's sitting on the table. The first yeah. episode's been done for a while. It's yeah. been sitting on the back end of YouTube, just waiting until we can get yeah. a few more so that we can make it more of a right. you know, slow slow drip release. We don't want to throw them all out at once, but yep. we don't want to put one out there and then, well, we got to wait to shoot it and something like yeah. that. We'd rather you know you get a chance to have like one a week or something yeah. like mm-hmm. that. So, But we were waiting for this bad boy to yeah. show up. So This yeah. one's my bad boy. Yeah, so that is Dane's 15 that he built at Rupes. Yep, his you, first it Rupes feels weird polisher. To say that. You assembled every single part on this. You put it together. I have a hard time believing that, but it's true because yeah. I was there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was great. Yeah. I mean, you did. I mean, Anthony and I each got ours also on Friday. Yep. So all three of our machines arrived. Yep. Uh, Dane signed his box. I don't know if you can see if Anthony oh, moves yeah. his head. <laughs> There Dane is. signed it, uh, and we all signed the Dane our boxes. Signature edition. Yeah, um, that way we cut one. We knew whose yeah. was in what box <laughs> um, as it was getting shipped. But uh, uh, it was really a fun event. Yeah. And so Dane, now you have your own. Rupes I'm polisher. stoked. I may actually Indeed. end up using it on the car. Yeah. Yep. So, we'll, so we'll we'll try to do something like that to where we we incor- obviously incorporate these machines, but maybe get Dane in there doing some polishing. Yep. Get some different shots because Dane's never um, polished before either. So I'm always holding the camera. One of the so. one of the cool things I think that'll be fun with this video series of the of your Volvo is getting you in there and having you. You know, we can give you some tips and some pointers on how sure. to run the machine, and then have you run it. And you can polish out some fenders and some hoods and things like that that are that, you know, for those of us, those of our viewers that are watching that are maybe the DIYers, they can one see 
how easy it is with a tool like this. My but experience level with the, actual yeah. like hands-on machine polishing is like that. Right. So people will get a real good idea yeah, of but, like but how even, a beginner can yeah, tackle exactly. that. And I think that'll so I've be used a Harbor Freight like twice. Yeah, <laughs> but I think this will be a really good experience, and it'll give um, it'll give our viewers a little more um, ease of entry, yeah. so to speak, to see someone like you being able to work on it and use it. So that'll be really cool. <laughs> My yep. bar is very low. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and then uh, the series that I'll be doing, we don't have a real working title yet. They've been calling I it like the Rod, the Rod Vlog. Levi's Rod Vlog. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be confused. Um, hey, with Rod's yeah, Vlog. Yeah. You know, well. yeah. Or a <laughs> vlog about, you know, Levi's Rod. <laughs> yeah. Or, he or went Rod's okay. Vlog about Levi. Yeah. Uh, mm. yeah. Know. yeah. <laughs> we're limiting the Rod and the Vlog and the... But that's about we're doing, Hot Rods but and it's Levi's. It's going to be kind of doing it with Hot Rods. Uh, again, we're starting off the series with Kenny's Rod Shop. And this is you and Tim making it. And me like, and Tim are making this. And this is our first Rag Company Presents yeah. uh, or Rag Company Produced uh, product. So it has yeah. nothing really to do with towels, uh, very little to do with detailing. It's going to be kind of our first foray into a show. Um, It'll be a show that and our a media company is basically yeah. promoting. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we're going to give our hand at that. So we're going to get started with that. Um, we're going to kind of kick it off with... Um, we went and visited him this week. That was really fun. Yeah. Got to check out the shop, walk around. Tim took some B-roll footage. There's some cool stuff. Um, and, yeah, some really gorgeous cars, some really neat stuff. So it's going to be kind of an in-depth, weekly, touch base talk, see what's getting done on the cars. Because a lot of people don't ever know how much work actually goes into those cars. You just hear how much something yeah. costs, and you're like, wow. Yeah. And then and when you see it, it makes more sense. Yeah, so we're hoping we can get some good you know, views and, and things like that where people can see like the actual process. And, you know, it may only be something as small as, you know, a piece of panel this big that they work yeah. on for two weeks and yeah. you get to see the process sort of, um, but you'll get to see the details that actually go in. And this is a very, it's like in depth. Uh, so if you like those like build and shows and stuff, yeah. but you feel like they're just a little too orchestrated or whatever this will be a really this is raw us literally real just going in and kenny talking look at with us whatever's and, going on yep, in the shop yeah, when these guys not, drop by we're not creating any drama we're not going to try and you know get some fights no. between kenny and his guys um we're he just, says he's already quirky he doesn't need yeah help, so. we're just going to get us in there and we're going to let kenny tell his story yeah that'll um, be cool and talk about the cars and the projects that he's working on and we're hoping that you guys really enjoy it i find this stuff fascinating uh, oh yeah it's right up your alley me. so and so i'm really excited to do it and we're hoping that if we can grow this that we can grow it into other builders too yeah. and we can reach out to other builders to do this kind of stuff so and you guys um, let us know if that sounds like something you'd be interested in because yep. we we want to make this stuff happen it doesn't always have to be necessarily super detailing specific but like detailing adjacent things yeah. that interest you well and uh, so Jason and him have a really good relationship, Jason Kilmer. Mm -hmm. So with Jason coming, we're going to try and kind of kick it off. So um, one thing I was saying is we can we want to have Jason on the podcast so you guys can understand what he, you know, what he comes from, the background he comes from, and the level of detail he works at because he works at a an extremely high level that that is almost non-existent for this a lot like of guys. This is like savant, world-class, crazy yeah. high-level stuff. And then we want to bring Kenny in and have the two of them talk about the projects they work on together, mm -hmm. which is something that, I mean, it's, it's unheard of, the level of... Uh, does the uh, word Riddler mean anything yeah, to you? <laughs> if you guys haven't done any, know anything about a Riddler Award, um, it's the highest level, highest judged, most in-depth look at a car um, and paint and finish and they know the judges of Riddler know if a car has been coated. They can tell based on whether or not they they they, they pour water on it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just no, kidding. I had to. I had they to. They look at the look and they don't yeah. want a coated finish. Yeah. There's very uh, varying levels that they have to achieve, and they look for toweling marks. They look for scratch marks. They look for. They're that the means guys no that, cheap towels, folks. No, but they go in and they are very in depth. And uh, Jason told me one story was he, oh, uh, yeah. they lost a Riddler Award contention because on the underside of the transmission tunnel, the underside, one little underneath the car, thing. underneath, so the transmission sits here, the tunnel wraps over it, there was a small one inch mark that he hadn't fully finished and uh, polishing it out, there was still a sanding mark Insane. underneath there. He said it was, it was probably that big. 
and they disqualified the car for it. He but at the, the same rest time, the car was flawless. Yeah, everything, and he's like, it's everything. It's if the inner side of the fenders are painted, they need to be perfect. If the flat firewall is done, that needs to be perfect. Belly pan, all that. But the point of that is to to hear that. That really tells you that when you do score, when you do make it happen, you know that you overcame all of that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. when they're looking that small, that that kind of minutia, you know you're absolutely world yeah. class. And these are the cars on the circuit. And these are the yeah. high dollar customs. Um, this isn't just, you know, the old man down the street has a hot rod and brings it out and he's wiping it down with his California car duster. I mean, this mm. is this is My a favorite. Yeah, this is What's a that again? I've never heard of it. Yeah, because I've walked around car shows and I go uh, <laughs> and I've walked into like the Boise Roadster show and gone like, oh my gosh, there's cars right. in Everywhere here you look, there's like four or horrific five. Horrific paint. <laughs> horrific paint. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't believe there. And there's an old guy out there, and he's got his paste wax, and he's waxing it, and he's got a co- couple Costco it's towels just or smearing Home Depot everywhere. towels. Yeah. And he's just wiping the wax off. But I can see all the scratch. I mean, it looks like he's ran it through an automatic car wash. But some folks don't know But better. that's that guy. Now, this isn't those cars. Yeah. The Riddler Award winning cars go on a circuit, and they, they are the usually the front row center cars they're the ones that right when you walk in the front doors of the convention center that's where they're at they're top level cars so um and there's only a few that contend for that every year the elite of the elite yeah so it it'll be i'm excited so i think you guys will really enjoy this series um i hope so we're fortunate to have access to stuff like this i mean so why not let's try it like we said last week you know it there are no rules, so yeah. let's see if we can if this works, and maybe we'll strike, you know, strike for some oil. So you know us, we make stuff up, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> so speaking of things that work and sometimes don't work. Oh yeah. We experimented this weekend. <laughs> well, this week, last yeah. week. Uh, Anthony and I have been kind of throwing this around in our minds for the last week, uh, last couple weeks, realistically. Yeah. Um, it started with. Uh, a product that we are going to be carrying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's called PNS Double Black Pearl Soap. Yeah. That was what we started with. Mm hmm. Um, yep. And we started using the IK foamers. Yep. We actually, so, well, we've been using the Pearl and, and IK foamers for several months now. Yeah. yeah. Um, for for, for, uh, for other testing purposes, but within the last couple of weeks, we started testing for, um, a, different for, for, for a different purpose. And yeah. we've actually had very so good luck with We'll this. start it out. Rinseless washes. Yes. People like using O and R for rinseless washes. Correct. And what is one of the number one questions we have gotten, <laughs> even though we have stated many, 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 many times, O and R does not foam. No. But I want to. Why, why do you want to foam O and R so bad? Uh, like they I just, said, foam is wanna... for the honeys. <laughs> o and R is for the money. Like no. I, so, I'm genuinely just confused. Like we mentioned multiple times. I think maybe it's when people are told no, they get more obstinate. I and think they just, so. They want to do yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. But. What's so the with that, we looked into O and R doesn't foam. No. no. Then we thought, well, OptiClean is a waterless wash. Yeah. It's a different formulation. It actually is. It's it, it, it and what it sadly it foams a little bit better than O and R, but but not to where I would call it foam. It's, again, it's still it's not a polymer. designed. To it's foam. more of it's like somebody. A, it's uh, soap, yeah, it's like so. kind of like you're spitting on the surface, and that's kind of what it looks like versus yeah. actual foam. Pleasant. Yeah. So what did we start working with, Anthony? So um, that's when we started uh, working with with Pearl. And so um, Pearl, when Rennie Doyle visited us last year, um, and he brought Pearl to our attention, um, one of the first things he said about this product was that it can be used as a rinseless, um, rinseless wash. And that, that caught us off guard. And that, yeah, because like, that but caught it's us off guard. Foams, and like so, it's car and we didn't really understand what he meant until we actually physically uh, felt the product and, and and felt the viscosity of the product. And so, uh, Pearl. Um, as itself is actually very watery. Um, it's you know yeah. you can shake it up. It's not like this thick soap. It's, it's not, not a that. Gel. It's not that at all. Yeah. It's very very watery, um, very runny. And so when he pulls it out, he said that this is a product that can be used in a foam cannon and foam beautifully. Um, it can be used as normal car wash soap, but depending on your dilution, it can be used as a rinseless wash. And we didn't know a whole lot about the product. We knew it smelled like lemons, which was nice, but that's when Rennie mixed up a little bucket of it. He put in a little sprayer and started spraying the car down with it or his uh, assault, his uh, yeah, the swirl assault, swirl yeah. assault yeah. vehicle. And he started spraying everything down. And, and start... they had just driven up from uh, Big Bear. Um, 
Yeah, so and it had some it had some bugs on, on it. It was middle of summer. Yeah, it, it was early it was, summer. It was in rough shape. So we started washing it and um, using the rinseless method. He was showing us how he likes to do it, and we followed up with another product that we uh, fell in love with. It's called uh, uh, bead maker. Bead maker. Um, it's part of the double black on. series as well. <laughs> and that is we are going to uh, be carrying that as well soon. It's probably becoming one of my favorite products um, as of as of today. And yeah. so he followed up with that and. Um, after we were done, he said, yeah, and that's it. That's all you have to do. Rinse this wash using this, what feels has a, has a very, um, uh, has a lot of lubricity. Very, it, it's, yeah, it's very, very luby, slippery, very slippery stuff. Um, but, and we had to uh, kind of, you know, trail back and say, so we, we don't have to rinse this off with, with water. And he said, no, this was designed to be able to do uh, multiple purposes. You can use it for doing your, your, your foam pre-rinse. You can use it for doing your normal soap wash, your two bucket method, but then you can also use it for your rinse list. And Cause you got so, those suds. So you're like, that's gonna just uh, wipe it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we were, we were really caught off guard about this. And like I said, this was about a year ago um, when he first introduced this stuff to us. And so um, in the last couple months, we had uh, a bunch of PNS products sent to us yep. and we started doing testing with the whole entire lineup and, um, we had been, you know, asking what the, what the rinseless, um, dilution was. And yeah. it was pretty cool. Cause we found out what ended up working best was, uh, about one ounce to one gallon of water, yeah, which is a really, uh, optimum, uh, not optimum, not optimum literally, but, but, <laughs> but an optimum dilution for, to get the most out of a product. Optimal, yeah. if you optimal, will. optimal, optimal product. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that dilution, uh, is very cost friendly. Yeah, mm-hmm. in that sense, that basically breaks down to uh, one twenty-eight to one. That's okay, what we figured out yeah. right because yeah, two fifty-six to one is half an ounce, uh, or one gallon per. What is that? One ounce per two gallons. Yep, it's one hundred twenty-eight ounces in so a gallon. So we're doing one ounce to one gallon, yeah. basically. Yeah. So it's one twenty-eight. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So one twenty-eight to one is the dilution ratio. Yeah. So we um. So we had been we'd been kind of playing with this and and I had been using this in the IK foamer for. Uh, a couple months actually. I had some yeah, I have some video, videos on our Instagram of, of me foaming it. I didn't say what product it was, but you can see that I was foaming this this different colored product. And um, people get excited makes, every time it makes really foam, pretty. Foam, it makes too. really really good foam, incredible foam. And um, it was just crazy because I, I wasn't putting a whole lot into the IK foamer and you know the little thirty five ounce. I was putting just about a tablespoon, and it was getting this beautiful. Um, I mean, not too thick, not too not too wet. Uh, uh, style of foam and I've been kind of playing with the different uh, nozzles on the IK foamer between the dry and wet setting and also the standard but um, in this last week and a half two weeks uh, there's a particular person that came out with a product uh, a rinseless product that foams yep. and so out of, out of nowhere we started getting all these questions and fielding all these so questions many. on if O and R being the most popular rinseless wash in the world, if that can foam. So we had, I don't know how many emails, yeah. count, countless emails, countless Instagram messages, and everybody asking what can foam, but can also be used as a rinseless. And we kind of laughed because we've known about a particular product that we've been yeah. using this, this, you know, uh, the Pearl we've been using for a couple months. There's and a lot of guys that use Pearl and love it. And so it's yeah. not a new product. No, by huh, any it's, means. Yeah. it's been out for quite a yeah. while. And Pearl's but... been out for a while. So we kind of laughed. We're like, well, that's, you know, our answer to that for people that are looking for a product that we could, you know, potentially sell, we want to sell would be Pearl because um, pretty much all last week, uh, last Friday, we foamed and Levi's we my car. Um, car. We did, we did the, uh, the Pearl. We did that in the, just the IK foamer. And we used the method of literally foaming the vehicle, taking a towel, a microfiber towel, and wiping the foam off, flipping it over, buffing that out, and then following up with the uh, um, the bead double maker. black bead maker, yep. and it worked. Game changer. It worked amazing. <laughs> yeah, the the whole game that changer so thing slick. came to our mind. But it's extremely thick that or, or slick. That foam that you're wiping off is really really slick, and it feels kind of weird. Come was kind of like you're wiping uh, a soap mixed with quick detailer. Not gonna lie, it doesn't, off the surface. It doesn't you feel are. right yeah. when you're doing it. It doesn't like, feel right. Why, why it, am I doing this? Yeah, but it, it also goes back to the guys with. If you've never done a rinseless wash in the first place, right. you still feel that same way. You, yeah. it, it's counterintuitive to where your brain works, and a lot yeah. of guys. And that was, I've had a lot of guys that have had that issue where they yeah. they go, oh, I can't. Um, 
I don't get a rinseless wash. I got to have the soap. I got to have the suds. Well, this will give you the suds. But we're yeah. so used to rinseless washes that we, we understand the concepts. It just, it feels weird wiping foam off. It yeah. does. Yeah. It does. <laughs> so we, I mean, we did a bunch of different testing on his vehicle. Um, we brought my car in. Uh, we're going to do test spots on Dane's car. Um, we're doing a bunch of different testing to where, you know, we want to make sure that it's a product that we feel um absolutely confident in, 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 scratch, in, in saying it. that it, that it does all these things but um just to give you guys uh, a, a, a quick taste. reference and a taste we did levi's car like we said and his car was pretty filthy he'd gone and through coated yeah several puddles his is coated yeah. so um, i hadn't washed it in about a month yeah we took uh skin grip lights we put skin grips all around the car did a full wash now mind you my afters. car is still smashed from my wreck <laughs> yeah so, <laughs> so so it was a those, front end those scratches still, don't count yeah those <laughs> scratches don't yeah. count but <laughs> The, the rest of the car is corrected. The fender, basically the front fender's back. Yep. Uh, but you take really was, good care of it, so yeah. you can tell when something. Well, I just I off. had corrected it recently and and coated it, so yeah. the yeah. car is perfect. Yep. Yeah. And so doing this, we had a very filthy surface. We were using a, a, our eighty twenty car wash towels. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we tried all the different types of towels. We found we that did they find worked, it. Yeah. We found the three sixty fives and the creatures work really Shorter good. Shorter nap is yep. the three hundreds even work really well. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, the car wash just worked because of the size. I'd probably try and stay with a 70-30 blend, but a short yeah. nap, mm-hmm. uh, just to limit the amount of scratching. Yeah. But, so but yeah, Edgeless we, 365. Yeah, Edgeless 365 worked great, but we did. We washed, we sprayed the foam on, a dirty surface. Very, I mean, your 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 lower portions of the car were, at the were, rinseless were dilution. filthy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, at the rinseless dilution. And wiped it, and we were following with the light to watch and yeah. see. And You're like, come on! I mean, we were, it was a really dissecting. I mean, like it was a very, you know, uh, I don't know. We were really getting OCD about it because let's just w- put it this way: the team, uh, our warehouse team, probably thought we were weird. We were yeah. crazy. Like I'm laying on my back <laughs> inside, like our, you know, our shop setting, and I'm I'm on my back with these scan grips, looking at every single area that Levi's wiping, and I'm following up with this light to make sure that there is no damage being inflicted. Yeah, and they're like, oh, that Levi's just getting his car washed for free yeah. over there. There. So Jeez. we were we were There's able to see taking a nap. <laughs> we're yeah. able to see the uh, all the dirt and all that coming off the vehicle, you know, onto the microfiber towels. But we weren't introducing that same side back onto yeah. the towel. So we were flipping the towel constantly, and it's weird because you're you're wiping foam. And the other big thing too is that I was checking about all the foam, um, all the foam the, that was the residue in the, in, the, in the cracks and crevices, yeah. um, seeing that if that was going to disappear, and it. Did. Yeah, it did with it time, dis- which was it, it disappeared and it was gone. So, and I guess you could, I guess I could see why you would want to take maybe um, if you had compressed air, if you did have a little a little blower, uh, little or, blower something. or something, you could blow that out. Insurance policy. Um, yeah. But we were really impressed with the way that worked, and and we were able to now, uh, you know, give people. Another option. A, an, another option for a yeah. product that's able to foam um, with our IK foamers. Oh, and, and then topping it with bead maker oh. is just oh. the bead maker. That is makes, heaven on earth. Makes man. a difference with yeah. anything. Oh, you no, use. you oh. you wipe that car down and then you top it with bead maker. Like I said, game over. No, that car yeah. is so slippery. That is a so good protected. Product. Um, it it's, blows your mind. Yeah, no, that, that, that I think that's going to be a product right. where yeah, we're we're PNS. we're uh, we're really <laughs> excited to get into your guys' hands because you know there's going to be people out there that are skeptics about it. We totally get it. Yeah, like, that's oh, yeah. you know that's be. that's who we are deep down. We're skeptics about a lot of things until we try things out for ourselves, which we and, had to do, and we we're had to try things out. We're not just going to throw something out there to throw something out there. It's because we actually tested it first. Yeah, we yeah, got to so. try it, and yeah. and it it was really cool. Yeah, put it yeah. that way. Yeah, like it, it works. Yeah, and like we said, there's no wrong way to wash a car. Yeah, comes out except shiny, for maybe like with a, a, good job. a brush covered in tar and rocks. And rocks, yeah. <laughs> Don't um, do that's that. That's probably not a good. So this way was to wash in my it. wheel well, and now it's going onto my hood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but what's cool about Pearl is you can wash. You can put it in that foam in the IK foamer. You can spray it. You can mix it to the rinseless dilution if you like. Foam it and rinseless and foam wash it, it. Rinseless wash it. Yep. Foam rinseless wash. Then, if you still want to, let's say it's kind of dirty, you can rinse the hose with the rinse the car with the hose. Yep. You can then do the foam mm-hmm. rinseless wash. You can also mix up a bucket to rinseless proportion. Mm-hmm. Yep. Dunk of wash mitt in there or towels, and still with the foam on the car, rinseless foam wash still. Rinseless yep. wash the surface of the car. I know I'm going to make your heads explode. <laughs> then you can dry it off. Yeah, you can do that. Wow. Or, or you can just use it as soap and water. Or you can wash. use it as just <laughs> a soap and water wash. Yeah, and not and measure anything and just just squeeze it in. And and have luscious lather and suds and have fun. Or you can pour it in your foam cannon 
on yeah. your pressure washer and get the girls in the bikinis and, out and, and spray and, them and, down and yeah, hey, we're not that literal oh, shaving sorry. cream <laughs> shaving cream foam all over the surface of the car yeah. you can do that with one product yeah yeah so and so it's pretty spectacular and again finishing the car with bead maker is just the icing yeah, on the you cake. guys once you get bead maker into your hands it's gonna so we're gonna build a kit yeah, that'll make I'm it excited. fun that you could do you know be able to use these methods these methods yeah and we're gonna make uh, an affordable kit for people that yeah. that want to do this so this is going to be geared towards i mean not just enthusiasts but pro detailers as well that are looking to save time and be more efficient but this is gonna be great for people that live in apartment complexes this yeah. is going to be great for people that are um you know at a certain time of year who can't do a proper wash with running water um this is going to be awesome for that yeah. and we're excited for you guys to test it out um, we're going to keep pursuing our testing you know as we get the products out on the site and then show you guys demonstration videos and of course um have a video for every method that we you know would use with this yeah. stuff and these are just more options it's not like we're saying something is we're not the saying, best and oh, like, it's, it's it's another solution it's so just that, another version yeah, yeah. This it's is just somebody... another another way to wash a car. People yeah. people like variety and well, and, and it's different for they everybody. Get bored doing we make the same six process different types of glass towels because there's a different everybody likes a different type of glass towel. Personal yeah. preference. So some people who've just never gotten on the boat with O and R because they just can't get behind it. We have optimum car wash soap. You can buy that, and we sell that to folks yeah. that come we, in and go, "Eh, I'm not really ready for rinseless." That's fine. Here's yeah. some really good soap. Well, we now we know, have another option. We know O and R doesn't scratch. To, yeah. To the folks out there who just have that hard time, like understanding that we've used it for so long in so many different yep. ways. If it was gonna scratch under the direction of how you're supposed to use it, we it would have happened yeah. by now. And we wouldn't be carrying yeah. it. No. It uh, wouldn't be a pro it wouldn't be a product at you know at this point you know it's been no. out for so long don't I mean don't Pe you think people there still was, look at it like it's a new thing it's it, not a new thing these things we're talking about right now comments. also yeah. not this yeah. is new not products a new it's not just made yeah. for the sake of having yeah. they've been around Pearl's yeah. been out for a few years and yeah. it's been the guys that use Pearl know that it can be used yeah. as a rinseless yeah and they've been using it as a rinseless you know and, and as their soap and all that so, so we're, we're not just making up something for the new hotness you know yeah, no, this no. is it exists already this is something that we've we've <laughs> had our hands on and this is something that i mean honestly we, we were going to get onto the website uh, a couple months prior to this um but we've been so busy with everything yeah. else that um yeah. you know we kind of had to hold it off but i think now um we are absolutely going to pursue everything it's, with this it's and pretty yeah. rad and uh one thing that i that one thing that i really like is again um the reason we pick the companies that we use um, is we want to know who we're dealing with. We want to mm -hmm. know the company inside and out. And uh, Mike and Bob Phillips, or Mike, uh, sorry, <laughs> yeah, Bob yeah. Phillips yeah. Yep, and yeah. Dave Phillips, yeah. the brothers, um, are the owners of PNS. Yeah. And they, uh, their dad started PNS. Mm -hmm. And family uh, business. It's been around for 60 years. Yep. Uh, Dave is the chemist. Dave is the one that formulated uh, Pearl. Yep. And they make everything in-house in their facility. Uh, and that's one of the things that we really like about the company um, yep. is, again, it's, a, it's an American-made product. And it's formulated here, and we have direct access to the chemist. And they're tried and true. They've been around They've been for around. A while, They've been so. around for almost 60 years. Yeah. And so, again, for us, that's a big um, – a big deal and a reason we we like working uh with them same reason we've we've worked with optimum we have direct access to dr g yep who's the chemist and we can talk to him about a product if we have questions same thing with david at, at pns is you're yeah. able to to find out and we have dave i interviewed dave in uh one of our detox yeah um at air force one so yeah. if you want go back and try and find that video and you can listen <laughs> and you'll to see that talk. was several months ago that was last yeah, year it in was the summer, last so. last summer we were talking yeah. to dave about it and he's got he talks about bead maker and talks about the products and so um it's definitely worth a look at that because again they're a great company um and we're excited to be able to bring them on and yeah. And uh, so now you make know them available. Future so, plans. Future yeah. plans. So, all right. So, let's kind of uh, get to the last portion of this mm. detail tip of the day. 
Levi, how do you determine the right wash method for the job? Well, you look at the car for one. Yeah. Line. Yeah. All right. Oh, well, so, you just, just answer well, the whole. It was supposed easy. to be that, like an well, in-depth. Okay. So like, uh, <laughs> you can't. The problem is there's so many. Uh, you can make a graph if you want to determine the dirtiness of the car and the right wash method of it. If you would like to do that. I could. But well, I know there's like flow charts out we there. Need where a, they're like if this, no, there is. So there's, you can get a whiteboard if you want. <laughs> so let's put it this way. So you've got, um, you've got. A muddy truck. Yeah. Thoroughly like, caked like in Like when mud. my niece took my brother-in-law's truck and took it up mud. Yeah. And get the California duster out. Yeah. Get, <laughs> get the California duster out, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wipe the mud off with it. Yeah. That makes uh, sense. Physics. <laughs> safest way. Just, yeah. No, but you look at it, and you go, uh, well, rinseless wash isn't going to work there because yeah. I have to get the mud off. Right. Yeah. So I need to bust out a pressure washer or a hose. Mm -hmm. So on a very muddy truck, I like using warm water with a hose. Mm-hmm. To get the the majority of the mud off, yeah. Warm because water if helps. if you go in with a pressure washer right off the bat with a truck that's caked in mud, you're going to be wearing all mm -hmm. that mud <laughs> because the force of it's going to press spray it all back on you. Projectiles, right? So this is me from 20 years of washing cars. You get a hose out, you bust out a hose, and you you use a hose yeah. to spray the water because it's a lower water pressure. If you can get warm or hot water, it helps emulsify uh, the dirt. A lot better mm -hmm. and can get all that off quickly then you use a pressure washer to finish and get the rest of the mud that that you can't get off that and it's usually one or two pieces around the corners and stuff well that's a then good lesson right you can there. use uh, a soap and water if you want you can use rinseless you can do it but you've got to get the heavy contaminants off the yeah. surface i think first. too many people are just quick to jump right on the pressure washer right off the bat and go yeah this will fix it it's right. going to be no. tough and it's going to well, cut right and, through it's like and, well and in my shop also if i had a let's just say a car off the street comes in and we're going to wash it yeah the very yeah. first step we do is we're going to degrease it mm -hmm. so we're going to put an all-purpose cleaner or a degreaser on the outside of the vehicle to try and get all the heavy contaminants and all the road grime and all that kind of stuff off the surface like a power clean or yeah a, or yeah. if you've got a you know a, um a, a dilution of a, of a, a proper dilution of an apc or something that, that sure. you know five yeah. six ten to one sometimes um and we're gonna we would spray that on the car that was the very first thing. I didn't care what was on the surface, especially if we we're going to polish it. Um, you know, as to uh, you know, that was the first thing. Then we'd start washing it. Um, yeah. So we had to get everything off first. Now, yeah. if the customer had the car parked in his garage and he hasn't driven it in a month and it's just been sitting in his garage and it's just collecting a little dust, and let's say my guys would go out to his house to clean it. It, of course, it was going to be O and R. We didn't yeah. need to bust out a hose. The car hadn't moved since mm -hmm. we last detailed it. It's just got a light layer of dust. We'd use O and R. Yeah. You know, there was no need to bust out a pressure washer and pull the car out and soak the vehicle. There was no need to induce that much water into the sure. vehicle in the first place. Or yeah. like our previous uh, Wash Wednesday mm -hmm. that we mm -hmm. just got done shooting with the Julia. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's not a car we need to hit with a pressure washer. No, we. You, nah, you got bigger idea. panel gaps and stuff on a car from the late '60s, early '70s than you yeah. do. Well, it's things, a vintage so. car. It's in good yeah. shape. It's really nice. Ninety percent of the time, you don't want to wash a car like that because you don't want to damage anything. Yeah, it's that Italian dirt, man. Yeah, so, yeah. so utilizing a rinseless wash works really well. Mm -hmm. Now, the beauty of this new foam rinse is basically same. It's the exact same thing. As a normal, typical rinseless wash, you're yeah. still emulsifying and you're encapsulating the dirt. And you're adding lubricity. You're adding you're lubrication, adding lubrication to, the to, surface. to the surface to pull off with a, hopefully, a soft towel, a microfiber towel, a mitt, or something like that. It's just that. for the people who you're can't removing handle that off. a yeah. rinseless. They need that visual element. Okay, right. you got foam now. So. Yeah. And it's the same as if you want to bust out a foam cannon. There yeah. are a lot of people that... We'll wash a car like we did on the Wash Wednesday for Rupes that we've done. We did a one bucket wash. Yeah. You guys, yeah, foamed we did the car, that on purpose just to upset soaked people. the truck, <laughs> and it was a coated surface, and it was covered yeah. in foam. Yeah, and then you just washed with soapy water in one bucket. In one bucket, and guess yeah. what? It worked. Yeah, <laughs> it worked because the truck was clean. Yeah, it worked. You know? It was clean. There wasn't any scratches or marring or swirls. So or you can. The truck wasn't clean when we started. No, FYI. but you can do a rinseless. <laughs> you can do a. Foam rinseless. You can do a traditional bucket wash with soap and water. Yep. You can do a two bucket wash if you want. Yep. You can do a three bucket wash. You can use a foam cannon. You can use a garden hose foamer. You can use a garden hose. You can use whatever you want to wash your vehicle. The key is to 
make sure you're using good products. Mm -hmm. Make yep. sure you're watching the t technique that is needed for each of those washes to help reduce the amount of scratches. Yeah. I mean, there's no wrong way to wash a car unless it's a brush soaked in tar, covered in gravel. Yep. I mean, uh, that's short. Nail I've polish had a guy, No, I've had a guy did that when I was a young detailer at the car wash that I managed. He showed up and goes, uh, I don't know how I got all these scratches on my hood. And we had three self-serve bays attached to our automatic bay that yeah. you mm -hmm. could drive through. And it was a full-service car wash, but he went through the thing. Well, a guy, we, it was a very busy Saturday. That was a day we would pump out like 300 cars through the car wash yeah. and through the, the self-serve bays was just lined up with people waiting to use it. Well, a guy had come through, washed his truck off, used the brush to scrub all the tar and rocks from the chip seals yeah. that were done that, mm -hmm. that summer on the surface. And the brush, he set it back in a little bucket. And rule number one, never use a brush at a car wash. Yep. First rule of thumb. Yeah. Good general rule. You know, don't use them. That's just, it's just don't use them. But this guy had done that, and we were all so busy, nobody had gone through to check that brush between customers. And he never washed it off. So the next customer pulled in, foamed his car down, then took that brush, threw it on there, and started washing his car. This brush was completely covered with mm. gravel. Yeah. <laughs> completely, and it was stuck to the brush. We had to literally oh. throw, we couldn't fix it. We no. had to throw the brush away and repaint yeah. the guy's hood. Yeah. That couldn't have been cheap. But that's the wrong way to wash a car. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know? There you go. Or do like I did when I was like 14 years old and grab some Ajax <laughs> there and, you go go. Wash your hey. dad's, and go wash your dad's Supra. Yeah. There Comet you go. Or yeah. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. Which is what I did. And my dad <laughs> was furious. Yeah. Because his, really so. his Mark II Supra was completely destroyed. Oh, I love yeah. Mark IIs. He was like, yeah, you don't don't use Ajax on clear coat. Mm, but nope. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. All yeah. right. Well, hopefully that helps so, you guys. No wrong way to wash a car unless unless it's the wrong way. Unless, unless you're doing it the wrong, wrong way. way. Yeah. And by then, guys, it's blatantly the wrong way. It's pretty yeah. evident at that point. Yeah. But a rinseless wash done right, totally fine. Yeah. Good products, good equipment, good tools like towels and things like that. You you should you you shouldn't be able to mess it up. Yeah. yeah. Very so. cool. All right, guys. All right. So I think that wraps it up till next week. But uh, thanks so much for listening and or watching if you're on YouTube uh, at the Rag Company channel, of course. Yep. And uh, you can catch us on iTunes or ShoutEngine.com at the Rag Company podcast. All right, guys. Till next week. Yep. This is us saying. Catch you later. Bye-bye. See ya. See ya.